In the early days of sports television, line play was largely ignored. All you would see was this pile of humanity in the middle of the screen while backs and receivers did their best to run around it. With the development of the telephoto lens, one of the things we were able to do was bring these nameless, faceless bodies to life. The result was Eyeball to Eyeball, the first film ever produced about linemen. This is NFL Action, and I'm Pat Summerall. In the past, there were two distinct parts of pro football action. One was the relentless struggle waged by the mountainous linemen. The other was the razzle-dazzle of their more acrobatic teammates. To be a lineman, you simply had to be huge, immovable, and willing to fight the unheralded battle of the trenches. But the game has changed, and so have the men who play the line. Now they are as quick as they are huge, as agile as they are fierce. Eyeball to eyeball, the play of today's linemen may well decide the outcome of the contest. In professional football, the quarterback is the master strategist who plots and directs his team's destiny. The instruments he employs for victory are the backs and the ends who are light, fast, and elusive, with the ability to excite and explode at any instant. They're all flash, all beauty, but above all, they are small people with little toleration for punishment. Above the glamour the backs represent are the biggest men in sport, the linemen. Men of huge dimensions, built and constructed for contact of awesome proportion. The linemen are the invisible parts of the offense and defense. Their war is a lonely war that is submerged and fought in the trenches where survival is the only law. From the time they strap on their helmets till the end of the game, the linemen are the meanest and toughest players on the field, the rogue elephant of professional sport. The linemen wage their conflicts in a small area known as the pit. This is a shadow world where a game is won or lost, where one finds the most skilled and complex battles in professional sport. In the pit, these invisible warriors find themselves face to face with someone every bit as tough as talented, as respected, and as feared. The catalyst for action is the snap of the ball that sets off a dazzling swirl of big men in motion. Caught in this tempest, the lineman is as apt to lose his helmet as his head. The linemen are hidden from the public view, the scrutiny of a television camera. Their abilities are not measured by touchdowns, but the facility of absorbing punishment and dishing it out. Easily as he strides off a stage of destruction, the lineman can walk on to one of classic grace and precision, but one that is no less violent. It is an arena of combat that pits man against man, strength against strength, with the purpose of removing or annihilating the man in front of you. An offensive lineman must present an impenetrable barrier to shield a quarterback from any clear and present danger, and also provide the backs with a battering ram that guides them through a maze of defenders. While the role of the offensive lineman has basically been one of protection, the historic task of his defensive counterpart has been a mission of destruction. The defensive lineman must stop the offensive flow any way possible. He must disrupt its momentum, wear down its personnel, 
and finally make it come to a complete halt. For defensive linemen is reserved the mean part of the game. During the 1950s, a complex offense with passing and running from diverse formations made the old seven-man defensive line outdated. In years past, a lineman was not particularly mobile or intelligent, just immovable. Faced with a wide open game, the defense was forced to make a change. The most important reason for the change was the rise of the superstar in the late 50s and early 60s. There was a fullback named Jimmy Brown and a group of extraordinary quarterbacks. Quarterbacks who could dissect the defense in an instant, or ones like Fran Tarkington, whose unorthodox style made calculated strategy obsolete. fleet receivers like Bob Hayes and number 45, Homer Jones, who forced a quicker, more mobile pass rush. And then there was Gail Sayers. Number 40 was an offense all by himself, and more than any one individual changed defensive concepts. So forced to cope with quick striking offenses laden with superstars, the defensive line took out three men and made them linebackers. Suddenly, with only four men to challenge the passer and protect against the run, a lineman had to be bigger, faster, and infinitely smarter. It was now that defense became a science. No longer did the offense have the decided edge tactically or physically. Quarterbacks and setbacks found escape from the determined pursuit of a lineman, a dreaded nightmare. The quarterback became a fugitive. For every plan, each step he took, every direction he went, there was a lineman there to meet him. And quarterbacks started talking to themselves. Though the linemen got bigger, stronger, and faster, their historic role remained unchanged. They still had to stop the running play and rush the passer. A lineman rarely gets two chances to halt a runner in flight. If he fails once, he's lucky to get another opportunity. The men of the line counter force with force, and a halfback on the go is no match on a collision course. Smothering a running play can be the result of a fine individual play. Two men working smoothly in tandem. Or the whole line attacking a ball carrier like hungry piranha fish. Whatever method the linemen employ, a phantom flyer is never safe from their deadly grasp. The art of rushing the passer is the second function of the defensive lineman, and by far the most important and demanding. A quarterback with a ball in his hands is the most dangerous man on the field, and a difficult person to contend with. The fanciful flights of the quarterback are not canceled swiftly. The best you can hope for is a short completion, because the worst could mean the game. So the monsters of the trenches must not let the quarterback elude capture, 
they must confine him in the pocket so that if they miss him with the first shot, the second will surely kill him. Rushing the passer requires an infinite reservoir of determination to overcome obstacles met along the way. Quarterbacks must be dealt with by pure power or deception, the lineman's second ally. The quarterback must be harassed into frustration or ground into the turf when he is caught unaware from the blind side. When defensive linemen can force the quarterback out of his preconceived plans, he takes away his favorite weapon and makes passing a hazard, another way to defeat. But finally for the linemen, it all comes down to hitting someone. This is part of the inbred violence of the sport. And when it's a time for crunch, defensive linemen treat runner and passer alike just nothing more than sacrificial lambs for the slaughter. game of hitting, certain linemen stand alone as the best there is, and they are called all pros. Dallas Cowboy tackle Bob Lilly has used extraordinary quickness to make him the best and most feared at his position. Defensive end Willie Davis of the world champion Green Bay Packers relies on guile as much as strength and speed to reach opposing quarterbacks. Davis are magnificent individual performers, but as a single unit, no defensive line is the equal of the front four of the Los Angeles Rams, immortalized by the nickname, the Fearsome Foursome. All four men have been all pro at least once in their careers. Right end is six feet seven inches, 260 pound Lamar Lundy. The tackles are number 78, Roger Brown, and number 74, Merlin Olson, a perennial all league selection from the time he graduated college. If there is a superstar among this line of stars, it's number 75, David Deacon Jones. Blending all the elements of stardom into one destructive package, Jones has become the prototype of the modern defensive end. Fearsome foursome operate brilliantly as a unit, and their rewards are the greatest their sport has to offer. But recognition is rare for the average defensive lineman. Theirs are not the faces of excitement, but the somber, grim faces of struggle. But each season, for a select few, there is that one glorious moment when they get to carry the ball, score a touchdown, and fulfill a lineman's dream. However, at times there can be infamy, like the time in 1964 when the Vikings' Jim Marshall ran 65 yards with a recovered fumble the wrong way. others, 
There is no notoriety involved, just the opportunity to turn this precious moment into a personal happening. To run like the wind, maneuver like a halfback, and if lucky enough, to cross the goal line. are the men of the defensive line. But the story of the linemen has another chapter. It's a story no less dramatic, no less exciting. One just as unique. The mission of the offensive linemen is to pry apart the defense and allow the backs easy access to a touchdown. Recognition is uncommon. They create the golden heroes of the golden game, but are not heroes themselves. All the fan sees, whether they're old, young, or pretty, is the runner striding toward fame. The picture catches at the ends of a flashing image of football's leading men. Offensive linemen are not the players carried off the field in triumph not the men one tears down goalposts for. Their rewards are more personal, as tackle Dick Shafrath of the Cleveland Browns explains. It is unrewarding in the fact that the average fan will be watching a receiver, quarterback, or an end. And uh, this is referred to me a lot. Nobody knows who, who I am uh, uh, because I am a lineman. It does not bother me because you're hitting somebody, you're part of each play. When you're carrying the ball or and then you might not catch a ball for a whole quarter. You're really an active part of the, the game if you're a lineman because you're in on 100% of the plays. The center is part of every offensive play, and his job is a very basic one. Guards must be mobile. They have to lead plays and clear away defenders in the path of the runner. The biggest men on the offensive line are the tackles. They must combine straighter head power with a certain amount of finesse. At best, blocking for the run is not easy, but protecting a passer is the most difficult and most important skill. Pass protection is probably the biggest uh, job of any offensive lineman. So I have to, in order to stay in this league and to help the Browns to be a winner, at least hold my man out eight out of 10 times. Pass protection is a long, patient learning process that takes years or maybe a career to fully master. Results of flawless pass blocking are always reflected on the scoreboard. It means keeping the quarterback's uniform clean and his body free from harm. It requires technique, but above all, it takes meanness, something no offensive lineman can be taught. Uh, my attitude has been that you do have to have an animal instinct in you, and you do have to be vicious. I uh, can't see anybody surviving this league without giving 100%. I think you get hurt uh, playing football if you're not giving 100% until the whistle blows. For the offensive lineman, hitting begins with hand-to-hand -hand combat at the line of scrimmage. Then the hitting moves out to the fringes, where the linemen attack defenders in a blur of action.
man against man, with the lineman accepting nothing less than perfection. Or it cascades into an armada of blockers with a setback tucked away snugly behind their protective buffer. For either an offensive or defensive lineman, it comes down to destroying the man in front of you. This is where it's really at in pro football. For the Browns, it was a game with the Philadelphia Eagles. For the linemen, it meant 60 minutes of unrelenting fury. And then he's going to slip you on the linebacker. We may go big on that. How can their end play so damn tight on me all the time? I can't believe it. Pettigrew just playing head up on me. Hold me again, lover. Hold me again. The new gunfighter in town was number 88, young defensive end Gary Pettigrew. To number 77, Dick Shafrath, his challenge would become undeniable. <laughs> The veteran had struck the first serious blow, and the young M had lost the first round. But youth is a fast healer, and Gary Pettigrew would return to continue the private war. Keep letting him have the big one. Come on, baby. Come on, guys. Get together. Take it easy. The Browns were hopelessly behind in the final minutes, but Dick Shafrath wanted one more touchdown to satisfy his pride. Stick. We go, partner. Oh, look at The game was almost over. The duel would soon be forgotten. But for Dick Shafrath and every lineman, there would be another Sunday. And the hitting would start all over again. Okay. Where'd you go, baby? Where'd you go? Great, how are you doing? Good, great, how are you doing? Left here. What are you trying to do, kill me? Huh? Jeez, this game's over a long time ago. You're the hell of a time.